Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECM Death 30 day model for today's uh, first video. So we're looking at temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next four weeks. Uh, not only for the UK, but for the rest of Europe as well. And um, this takes us into uh, March, of course, into the second half of March now. So uh, we're going to have a look and see what the ECM Death 30 day model is forecasting for the next... Um, sort of uh, four weeks. We can't show you mean sea level pressure anomalies or fire pressure with our heights of this, but you can get a rough idea of what model is expecting in terms of the overall pattern from the temperature and precipitation anomalies. Later on this afternoon, we'll have your regular week to send a video update about have all of the usual features as well. So come back for that. Uh, later on this afternoon at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this. So a big thank to them for supplying us all with the charts as always. Uh, right then, so uh, this is the week one temperature anomaly for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. Uh, week eight for the year for uh, 2020, but uh, week one for our forecast period. It's taking us from the 17th through to the 23rd of February. Uh, you can see that generally it's another very, very mild week coming up across most parts of Europe. This has been an exceptionally mild winter. And on and on it goes. So across northern parts of Russia, still seeing temperature anomalies there, 10 degrees or more. Widely across the west of Russia and into the east of Europe, we see temperature anomalies of 6 to 10 degrees above average, exceptionally mild, and also into some southern parts of Scandinavia as well. And then more widely still, across many northern, western, central parts of Europe, the uh, temperature anomaly is around 3 to 6 degrees above average, exceptionally mild, uh, really for most parts of Europe. It's only in the far west that temperatures are still above average, but not as extensively above average. So for England and Wales Island, we see temperature anomalies there around 1 to 3 degrees above average. And then going down into west of Europe and through the Med, uh, once again around 1 to 3 degrees above average, where southern parts of Spain up to 6 to 10. The far northwest of the British Isles, so across Scotland and down to Northern Ireland, near normal there. That's the coolest place in Europe other than uh, kind of Turkey, I suppose. And then going up towards Iceland, it is actually cold on average across Iceland, as it has been throughout the winter on the cold side of this very active uh, jet stream. And uh, with an intense polar vortex, it keeps Iceland and anywhere further north uh, really very cold indeed. But most parts of Europe are actually looking very mild this week. Uh, precipitation anomalies uh, from 17th to 23rd of February look like that. So north-south split, again, something that we've seen a lot of through this winter. Um, out sort of marking the dividing line over towards Ukraine and the Black Sea. Anywhere north of that, generally above average precipitation, uh, very substantially so across parts of uh, southern western Norway and also down into northern western parts of the, the British Isles and also Ireland as well. Uh, so uh, really wet in those areas and generally just above average precipitation through most parts of northern Europe. Conversely, though, southern Europe looking very, very dry uh, indeed. So most parts of the Med looking dry. A little bit more showery in the southeastern corner of the Med, I suppose. But overall, uh, a, a dry scene through southern Europe and a wet scene through northern Europe. All indicative of a pattern that we have throughout winter. The Azores high ridging into southern Europe. Lots of low pressure up here. Jet stream uh, coming in with that low pressure. Um, and so very unsettled across northern Europe, driest conditions down across southern parts of Europe. Then we go through to week two, uh, which is week nine for this year. It takes us from the 24th of uh, February to the 1st of March. And this one, again, very mild scene across most parts of Europe, particularly uh, sort of central eastern parts of Europe, so this area just here, this darker orange shading from the Baltic down to Italy and anywhere further eastwards, seeing temperature anomalies of around 3 to 6 degrees above average, central parts of Russia over here with still 6 to 10 degrees above average, so it remains exceptionally mild across uh, many, many parts of Europe. Out to the west, that's where the cooler temperatures are. And actually this week, a little bit um, interesting, given this is the final week of meteorological winter, um, this week is a bit colder than average across Norway and all parts of Sweden. I mean, down into the UK and uh, Ireland, it's actually a little bit cooler there. Scotland, for example, coming out colder than average. It's one of the coldest weeks that we've had forecast by the ECM 
for this week in the extreme northwest of Europe. Obviously, it's not particularly cold its own terms, but it is notable how much cooler it is compared to most of the weeks that we've had through this winter. Iceland, looking very cold, actually. Temperature anomalies there between 3 and 6 degrees below average. Um, so, uh, really cold week there uh, for Iceland. Down into the Mediterranean, again, mild of an average through most parts of the Med. So, um, you've got Spain, for example, up to around 3 to 6 degrees above average. Italy, south parts of Italy anyway, 3 to 6 degrees above average. The Balkans, I mean, down in towards Greece, around 3 to 6 degrees above average there. Otherwise, more widely, 1 to 3 degree above average. It's a mild scene, or a very mild scene through most parts of Europe, away from that extreme northwest, western corner, where it is a bit colder. And uh, precipitation anomalies look like this. So, still broadly the same, actually, uh, for week two, 24th of February to 1st of March. Still a north-south split, drier than average across much of southern Europe, from Spain and Portugal in the west over to Greece in the east. Above average precipitation across much of northern Europe. There is a bit of a difference, though. I managed across Scandinavia uh, and also Iceland. We see it's going a little bit drier there. Uh, so what's happening here, the reason it's going a bit cold in the far northwest, I think, is that the jet stream is shifting southwards a little bit. The jet stream is coming southwards a bit. There's still, there's still sort of high pressure from the Azores ridging into southern Europe, that kind of pattern, and low pressure up here. The only difference that is that with the jet stream shifting southwards, possibly raising the heights a little bit uh, up here. And so with the jet stream coming southwards, it's allowing things to go just a little bit colder across the far northwestern corner of uh, Europe there for the last week of the winter of 2019-2020, meteorological winter anyway. Uh, then we go through to week three, week 10 of the year. It's the 2nd to the 8th of March. And uh, this one then goes uh, a lot milder in the northwest. So that little colder interlude in week two is not sustained. Week three uh, generally seeing above average temperature anomalies. The intensity of the above average temperatures is uh, easing a little bit, although much of Eastern Europe is still three to six degrees above average. And then more widely across most parts of Europe, we're around one to three degrees above average. UK and Ireland going up to around one to three degrees above average. Uh, and just generally looks quite a bit milder as well there. Much of Southern Europe remains as it has been generally on the mild side, although France is a bit cooler. Precipitation anomalies uh, look like that for week three from the 2nd to the 8th of March. So it goes wet and average again across Scandinavia, perhaps, and northern parts of Europe. Begin to see things becoming drier on the western side of Europe. So uh, uh, heights increasing in the west of Europe. High pressure beginning to, uh, beginning to get its act together, perhaps, and start to reach northwards. So I expect this week is possibly seeing a jet stream going north uh, up to here sort of thing, the low pressure going north, and then some higher pressure is building across this western part of Europe. Notice these precipitation problems in the east of Europe are uh, near normal or have no signal. Definitely, definitely, definitely looks like the high pressure is more towards the western side of Europe there. And then finally we go through to uh, week four, week 11 for the year, 2020, takes us from the 9th to the 15th of March. Just above average, really, across most parts of uh, Europe in this week. Again, the intensity of the anomaly is easing off. But then, on the other hand, the sort of widespread um, above average temperature anomaly is probably increasing. So, basically, all areas are above average here with the temperature anomaly. In most places, around 1 to 3 degrees above average, with a few areas, like southern Scandinavia, uh, around 3 to 6 degrees above average. It's a very mild scene. Uh, in week four. The only place that is perhaps a bit cooler is down here in the southeastern corner of the Med, Greece and Turkey, and also up towards Iceland, although they're not as cold as it was earlier in the forecast period. But otherwise, it's just widely above average with the temperature anomaly. And precipitation anomalies, again, from the 9th to the 15th of uh, March, we're around average or have no signal through most central and eastern parts of Europe, really from Germany eastwards. In the west, still hints at being a drier than average. So maybe we're going to go into a drier phase across western parts of Europe through the first half of March. It would be very useful if we could do that, build up some higher pressure. I think we certainly need to dry out a little bit. 
So uh, possibly the first half of March for Western Europe, not only for the UK, but for like France and Ireland, possibly, possibly hinting at being a little bit, uh, a little bit warmer and drier then. Or a little bit drier and still relatively mild, I suppose. Um, northern parts of Scandinavia, wetter than average. Through the Med, we see that most central western parts of the Med largely uh, drier than average or slightly drier than average in the southeast corner. No signal. So you've got these unsettled conditions staying with us really through to the end of February, definitely. Uh, and also staying uh, exceptionally mild as well. It looks like the um, first exceptionally mild for most parts of Europe, though, it does go a little bit cooler for last week of February, interestingly, across the far northwest of Europe. Um, we're going to March. It looks like things turn drier, perhaps, across the western side of Europe. Maybe it's more influence from high pressure ridging northwards, sending the jet stream a bit further north as well. No real signal for eastern parts of Europe. But if we can pull off some high pressure uh, uh, across the UK and western parts of Europe through the first half of March, I think that will be very, very welcome after this <laughs> deluge of winter. Uh, right, that's everything you missed. It's only a snapshot, so it could all look very different uh, next week. Any forecast beyond five to ten days is, for, is fraught with health warnings, of course. We'll be back later on with your week to ten day video update, so come back for that then. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.